But this is a great series. It's actually a relationship series because it's all about how we see things. And it's about the lens that we see through. And Angela last week started the series and she did such a great job of just un- helping us understand that we all see things through a lens. We all see things differently. Isn't it weird how, how we can see the same thing, really? Literally, there's, it's the same thing, but how we see it is so different. You know, and there's all kinds of examples. You can look at those funny pictures, you know, that depends on how you see it. Everybody sees something different, but it's true in life. Everybody sees something different, but you have to understand this. You don't see with your eyes. They're a tool that feeds your brain. You actually see with your brain. So when we say everyone sees differently, it's because everyone thinks differently. And uh, I've been rereading again um, Dr. Caroline Leaf's book called The Perfect You. And it really just talks about how all of us were created different, on purpose, for a purpose. And actually, the way we think is so different. There's no two of us that think the same. And just to understand this today, I'll have some some things that will help us. I want you to walk away with an indelibly picture on the inside of you that helps you understand who you are, how you are, and how the way you see, interpret how you are actually does cause you to interpret how the world is. And God wants us to see it his way. And how we think is made up of choices. Mind you, a lot of those choices weren't yours. A lot of those choices were generational choices. But we can't blame generations. Why? Because we are all actually stewards of how we see things. Dr. Caroline Leaf puts it this way. A lot of people say, well, I can't help it just the way I am. Yes, you can help it. You actually, every one of us need to get in the driver's seat and decide that we're going to be who we want to be. And the way that we thought in the past is that your brain is wired a certain way and you can't help it just the way it is. That's the way I think. That's who I am. Can't help it. But actually, she has proven and and science has proven and the word of God backs it up that no, uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, we have choices. And actually, the thoughts that we choose build the brain that we get. So you and I have a brain that thinks differently, all of us in this room, all of us think differently. There's not two people the same. And I learned this years ago, if you've ever heard me tell the story of the time I I went on a date with Angela, our oldest, and I I get on this date and and I'm thinking, an eight-year-old, how do you talk to an eight-year-old? And anyway, I asked a few questions and this amazing realization hit me. Everybody's got their own world. Okay, what does that mean? Everybody sees things differently. There's not two people that have the same way of thinking. And the way of thinking that we have actually becomes our reality. Okay, your reality is different from my reality. And I've said this before, and I think just all of this kind of builds for me and helps me understand things, but to to recognize that you don't know what someone else is thinking, you don't know what they're going through, you don't know. Recognize, doesn't matter who it is, doesn't matter what color skin they have, doesn't matter what language they speak, where they come from, you don't know. You can't say that you do, you don't. So recognize and and accept that you are ignorant, but you don't want to be stupid. Ignorant is I don't know, but stupid is I don't want to know, or I don't need to know. Yes, I do want to know. I want to understand your reality. What does that mean? I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to see through your eyes. I want to understand why you think the way you think. And all of that helps us 
put on the right pair of glasses. So last week, Angela shared, we all have these on. Wow, you look weird. These are, what are they, Kanye glasses? No. <laughs> and a lot of people want to have these glasses. Why? Because, well, he's kind of famous. So I want to be like him. And you know that thing called comparison? I want to be like someone else? I, I would hope today would break that in your life and my life. You don't want to be somebody else. Why? Because there's nobody else like you. And, you don't, and you, want, you don't want their reality, which is basically the way they see things. And we all have this lens that we look through that sees things differently. And it's according to the choices that we've made, okay? When we choose to think a thought, okay? When we choose to think a certain way, our brain actually builds that thought. And the way Dr. Caroline Leaf puts it, and this is so interesting, is your thoughts have real estate. What does it mean? Well, your thoughts is a choice, which is just you. The, the person that God created, the choice you make, though, causes changes up here. And after you've made the choice, you walk away from the choice and your brain's changed. And we all need to take responsibility for the way we think, which is the way we see. Okay, Jesus said it this way. In Matthew 6, he says, if therefore your eye is good, or in other words, if therefore you see well, you see good, then he said, your whole body will be full of light. So it affects your whole life. The way we think, the way we see, Affects everything. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. We need to recognize we are not victims of the way we think. We actually are architects. Okay? We're architects of the way we think. And it's never too late. <laughs> 65, almost 66. It's not too late, John. You can actually change the way you think. And as Angela talked about last week, the first thing we need to do is learn to take these off. What's that called? Repentance. Repentance simply means to repent, go up to God's way. These are not God's way. They're a lower way of thinking. We need to rise up to God's way of thinking. Paul writes it this way in Ephesians 4, 22. He says that you put off, take off those glasses, put off Concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Okay, a whole bunch of lies that we've listened to. Remember last week, Angela talked about lies. The world has lied to us. Why? Well, because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 that the God of this world is not, not God. The God of this world actually is the liar, is Satan. And, and as we listen to all the lies that the world tells us, the lies that you have to be this way, you have to look like this, you know, all the advertisements, everything else, and also we lie to ourselves. We, we lie to ourselves and we, we, we think, you know, well, I feel, I feel comfortable or I feel normal when things aren't going good, so, so I just become a victim. And I'll, I'll actually um, come up with with things that aren't going good. I'll find things wrong so that I can feel comfortable. And we've got victim mentality. We've got, um, sometimes we feel like we've been rejected, so we don't want to get hurt. So, so we're going to find reasons for people to reject us before we get hurt. And, the, you know, rejection, all that stuff is the things that we have taught ourselves. According to the uh, the deceitful lust, and then he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, take these off, put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness. How do you do that? Well, the key scripture today is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 8. This is such an important scripture. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 8 says, But we all, with unveiled face,
But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Everybody say transformed. transformed. There's the key. There's the key. But we all, with unveiled face, so, so what, what, do you, what do you mean? But we all, when we behold as in a mirror, these come off. This is the veil, the way we think. These lenses, these glasses, they come off. When we, beholding as in a mirror, unveiled face, the glory of the Lord. So the mirror is this, okay? And just keep that up for a minute because I'm going to keep coming back to it. But in the beginning, the Bible tells us John chapter 1 was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were created by the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld Him as the only begotten of the Father, full of glory. Who's the Word? Jesus. But we all, with unveiled faith, when we look into this perfect mirror, when we look into this perfect mirror, we see what God sees. What does He see? As we look in the mirror, He says, we see the glory of the Lord. We see what God sees. He's not seeing your mess. He's not seeing your mistakes. He's not seeing, seeing all, the, all the lies. He's seeing what he created. And recognize, keep in mind, he created you, individual, specific. No one's like you. Nobody's like you. You're, you don't have to try and be Kanye. You don't have to put on somebody else's lens. You don't have to compare yourself with someone else. God, if you look into this, you see you. And you see the glory of the Lord. And the result is really explosive. It's called transformational. That's the key. The gospel is transformational. The gospel is not another way of thinking. The gospel is not another religion. The gospel is a living, live it's the living, live Word of God. It's transformational. It's explosive. It's powerful. 2 Corinthians 5.17, If any man be in Christ, old things pass away. All things become new. Something happens when we look into the perfect mirror. So, I got a couple of mirrors. Okay, this one is the perfect mirror. I look into that, and I, I, I see myself... Clearly, I can see clearly now. The rain is, yay, can't be Vancouver, no. That's what we need to look into. But see what we've done over the years is we've looked into, with these on, we've looked into what someone else says, the world says, and I don't know if you can see this, but this mirror is a mess. It's broken. So because it's broken, it's going to fall apart. So I actually had to tape it up. Um, a lot of people, we look into everything else. And what, what do we see? Broken. We see broken. And we've had to tape it up. We've had to figure out how to keep it all together. Mm, oh, Lord, that's hard, isn't it? And then besides that, here. We've listened to what others have said, and I just wrote something on my mirror. It says, ugly. How about this one? Loser. You are a bad boy. Bad. See, we actually need to look into the mirror to figure out who we are. But how we see us determines how we see others. That's the, such a key in life. We can't be a good person and just see other people really good. We need to, first of all, see who we are. And when we look at who we are through the lens of the lives and everything, it's, it's, it's kind of ugly. It's kind of ugly. Do you ever look in the mirror and just see the broken? 
Do you ever look in the mirror and just see ugly? Just see loser? Nobody cares? Old, wrinkled, fat, skinny. What is it? Wow. This thing determines how we see the, the world around us. And the gospel is not putting on another set of glasses. Which means the gospel is not something you go and learn. It's, you, you, don't, you, you don't get an education called the gospel. You don't go to, to university and learn a better set of lenses. Now, the gospel is simply transformational. See, when you look into the perfect law of God, these things come off. And you see what's been there all along. You didn't get good. You were born by him, through him, in him, for a purpose and a reason. And when you look into this, you see what God sees. And he sees something different for every one of us. We're all as important as the next one, but we're all different. And we need to look into the mirror, into the God's word, find him. We go back to our story. You know, like Helen said, 40 years ago, we were messed up. And, and Helen comes to the end of herself, Psalm 51, and finds the Bible new again, brand new again, and begins to see. Who? Herself. It always starts with you. It always starts with you. If you see yourself as a loser, you're going to see the world as a loser. You know what these things are called when you put them on and you see yourself disguised, whatever way, and you, this, is, this is your reality. You know what these things are called looking at other people? They're called judgment. You can't help it. You look for them, you look in them, and you look what you don't like in you, you look, at, you look for it in them. Because if you're not the only one that's ugly, not the only one that's a loser, not the only one that's bad, then you know, maybe I can feel a little bit better about myself. So we, we begin to judge other people. And Christianity is taking those off so that we can see clearly now. And then we can turn around and see others clearly now. Something comes alive on the inside of us. And that transformational power of the gospel is so important. See, it says that we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. It's not a one-time thing. Everybody turn and tell somebody it's not a one-time thing. From glory to glory. Why? Because <laughs> our memories are pretty short. They leak. <laughs> I, I know Helen was preaching the one time someplace, and, and she said, we all leak. And everybody started laughing. And, no, we're not talking about that. <laughs> but our memories are short, and they leak. And we forget who we are. And we begin to again look into what does everyone else think we are, say we are. But the gospel is so powerful. Listen to this, Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God to salvation. Salvation starts when you, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord, be my Savior. But it doesn't end there. It's a lifetime. It's a lifetime of being changed from glory to glory to everyone who believes. John 8, 32, I love this. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. See, you shall know the truth, who God sees you are, and the truth shall set you free. You know what freedom is? Freedom is seeing or thinking the way God's created us to see or think. Dr. Caroline Lee's book called The Perfect You is a great book. Really, I, I would in, encourage you all. It's a little bit mm, 
maybe a little bit confusing if you're not, if, you know, you haven't, haven't read anything about the mind before, but I love it. And she talks about how every one of us, we were wired different. And when we take away all the wrong thinking, she calls that toxic thoughts. If you can clear out all the wrong thinking, you can release that perfect you. And every one of us, there's, the, there's a perfect way of thinking that, that helps us be the way that we want to be. See, if you took away all of these, all the lies, do you know that we'd all see differently still? We'd see it the way God created you to see it. Okay, if let's say you have a, a prophetic calling in your life and you walk into this place, what do you see? Well, you would see everything that needs to be corrected and everything that needs to be changed. And, 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 and you'd be so excited to help people co be corrected, help people change, just give them the, the black and white, the answers. That's prophetic. But say you, you were created and God's gift put on the inside of you a, 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 a mercy gift. You'd walk in here and you don't want to correct anybody. You want to make everybody feel good. You want to go to that person that's not just doing things right and just put your arms around them. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You're loved. Well, why? Because we all see it differently. And that's so important because you go back to the very beginning, Genesis 1.26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. He called us to show the world who he is. We are to display his image, but we, plural. You can't be human alone. We, plural, together. We, every one of us doing our individual parts. Your part's just as important as my, my part, but all together, the world sees who God is. We're created to Created to show, to be in his image. Does that make sense? So, to think God's way is simply to think through the lens of love. Because the lens of love is no lens at all. It's the way we're created. When we see God's way, we see with the, with the eyes of love. And every one of us, because we are created with a destiny on the inside of us, something comes alive. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. What are you talking about free? The perfect you. Think the way God called you to think. See the world the way God called you to see it. No one else sees it like you. There's no other reality like yours. We need you to see what God sees through your life. We're all created with a destiny, all created with that individual, specific purpose. Something happens, it's called transformational. When we look into the perfect law of God and we see what God sees. I, I, I think this, to me, I've, I've always, you've, you've probably heard me talk about this if you've been around for a while. But it's really exciting to me to understand this law of resonation. What happens is something resonates. It's already in you. But you see what God sees. You see what he's, the glory of the Lord. You see his purpose and his call in your life. Something comes alive. And it's literally explosive. Really, something comes alive inside of you. When someone meets Jesus, you don't have to teach them. You don't have to convince them. You don't have to give them a religious lesson to teach them that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They know it. That's why when someone has an argument and wants you to argue them through to believing, it's useless. Don't argue. Forget it. What you want them to do is see Jesus. What you want them to do is see what you see. And when you do, something comes alive. It's already in there. We're all created with a purpose, on purpose, and this, this explosive transformational ability. That's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, all things pass away, all things become brand new. Something explodes on the inside of them. It's not putting on a new pair of glasses. It's taking them off 
in seeing the way God created you to see. How we see, how we think, determines how we behave. Please, we don't want everybody being cookie cutters. Some people think they don't belong in church. Why? Because they think church is for cookie cutters. I don't look like them. I don't dress like them. I don't talk like them. I don't be like them. Please, please, please do not. Be you. Be all you. Completely you. This, to me, sets me free. I hate religion. Religion is another set of these. That's what religion is, another set of these. So I've got to be like this, act like this, look like this, talk like this. No, 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 take this off. Be you. Be who God's called you to be. Okay, you're struggling through some things. You haven't got it all figured out. Welcome <laughs> to the human race. You will struggle, not got it all figured out, all your life long. But never look down at yourself because of it. Look to God. He's got the answers. Every single one of us, we need to continually look into that perfect mirror that tells us who we are and, and, and causes us to behave the way God's called, caused us to be. And together, all behaving the way God called us individually to behave, walking through this thing of love, we reflect his image. How? Okay, closing. How? What's your takeaway? Simply, number one, this. Discover who you are in him. Don't look at this with judgment. Look at this with revelation. Don't look at this because God does not judge you. He loves you and he sees the real you. Doesn't see the messed up you, doesn't see the broken, ugly, loser, bad, taped together, hardly making it. He doesn't see that. He sees this. So look into what does God see. And when you do, you get Jesus comes into your heart and you become, all things become brand new, all things pass away, all things become brand new. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Have you ever heard the word justified? You become justified in him. What do you mean by that? Well, Jesus paid a price for you and I. He, he actually took and with a great big supernatural eraser, erased all of that and then hung on the cross and by his stripes we were healed. And that mirror become whole and healed. Justified can be said like this too, just as if you've never sinned. When you see yourself the way God sees you, and Jesus is the Lord of your life, it's just as if you've never sinned. And secondly, don't forget. Don't forget who you are and begin behaving accordingly. This is so important. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 in the New Living Translation. Listen to this. James says, but don't just listen to God's word. Okay, you look in the mirror. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't do what it says, don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. Here we are. Okay, you see yourself. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You walk away and promptly forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sees you free, whom the sun sets free, explosive, that resonates with who I am on the inside. And if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for your doing it. You'll walk in his perfect blessing. So number one, discover who you are. Number two, don't forget. And number three, begin to look at your world through God's eyes, his way of seeing. 
Look at your world and see them differently. That's the key. You need to look at you so that you see them. You need to look at you so that you, your reality is God's perfect reality for you. It's all different. There's not two of us the same. The way we think is different. The way we see is different. But God's way is the right way. Have you ever heard this WWJD? People say, what would Jesus do? Well, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Because doing is behaving. How would Jesus behave? Well, no. Let's back it up. Behaving actually comes from how you think. The way you think is the way you behave. So if you're going to ask WWJD, you have to actually go back and ask WWJT. What would Jesus think? But thinking, again, this process is all about seeing. When we see what God sees, when we choose the thoughts, the right thoughts, it changes the way we think, which changes the way we, we behave. So let's back it up even one more. WWJS. What would Jesus see? That's what we need to do. Look into this. Don't forget. Keep looking into this. From glory to glory, you're transformed. There's not a one-time thing. Keep looking into this. Find out who you are. See your life and what, the value that God's put in your life. And then turn around and see. And when you see something that, that, that maybe in the past has kind of messed you up, stop and ask the question, what would Jesus see? Because when you look through no lens, the eyes of love, God's way, you see what Jesus would see. And that would cause you to think what Jesus thinks. And that would cause you to behave what Jesus behaves. So number one, discover who you are. Number two, don't forget. Number three, change your world. You know, when you see other people the way Jesus sees them, God uses you as the mirror. People need to see Jesus in you. And when they do, they get set free. We're here to set the world free. We're here to help people get free. Get free of what? Get free of all of the junk and be who God's called you to be. I hope you never forget this. I hope you never forget this ugly thing. And I hope you keep using this. Amen.